Starting your own practice is hard for many chiropractors. It's riddled with both struggles and successes. But here at the Chiropractic Philanthropist, we make it easy by having chiropreneurs and entrepreneurs share their struggles and lessons learned in life and business so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. And now, here's your host, Dr. Ed Osborne. How amazing would it be if you could practice because you want to, not because you have to? Learn how to improve your cash flow and increase your passive income now. Go to moneyripples.com or find their podcast, The Chris Miles Money Show, to learn more. All right. So, um, all right. Welcome, TCP listeners. We have an incredible guest today, and that is actually Dr. Robert Love. Doc, how are you doing? Hey, doing good, man. How are you? I'm good. Just coming off calls. I've been on calls since 9 a.m. this morning. It's, you know, 12 o'clock going on three hours now. So I'm, I'm pumped, man. And That's also, you know, day, man. <laughs> it's the best way to be is like, just sit here, my ass in a chair and I talk to people all day. Um, so, I mean, I know a little bit about you. I feel like yeah. I need to know more about you. So why don't you share a little bit about yourself and then uh, we'll go where the conversation goes from there. Sure. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, a chiropractor. Uh, got a practice just north of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I, uh, I, I teach part time. I'm a clinic doc at Life University. I uh, wrote a book called The Secret of Life. Um, that's that's taking me places that uh, didn't know we could ever go. Um, been a lot of fun. Um, and uh, I don't know, I spend uh, every day in practice. We've got a, um, another uh, organization and company I work with on the side. We work with Fortune 500 companies. Fortune 25 companies here lately has kind of been our, our knack and uh, try and help leaders do more for more people more often. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the quick rundown. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what you, which part you want to dive into. Uh, so before we started recording, you told me, like you revealed to me, you're like, hey, you know, this isn't the first time I've been on, on a live stream. Like I actually, you, you had two <laughs> different variations or uh, of your life and business and what you were doing before you became a chiropractor and a teacher, like a, so tell, tell me, I'm, I'm interested. Sure, what are those yeah, yeah. So, so the background of that, I had two careers before chiropractic. I grew up in television and radio. Uh, so in the nineties and early two thousands, I did uh, live TV and live radio. Um, and this is, you know, pre-internet there just, there just wasn't, you know, big time video on the internet back then and before the iPhone existed and, and we could do all these cool things that we do now. Um, but yeah, I, I came up doing uh, live TV and radio in Southern West Virginia um, and had a lot of fun being a broadcaster and uh, and doing different things. And then consequently, that led me into doing a lot of nonprofit work. We did a lot of uh, 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 mission work. We worked with an organization called Volunteers in Mission, our two, two stations did. And so um, out of that, I got a heart for, for mission work and went into ministry. So I ended up in Washington, D.C. and I went through seminary. Um, and was uh, an ordained minister for a few years. And then that led me uh, into theology and philosophy and deeper exploration, which led me to chiropractic. Um, wow. And so it's, it's been a journey, but yeah, I was, I was sharing with you before. I love that the world has kind of, kind of come full circle for me. And now I get to do live more often again, because uh, you know, I don't work in TV and radio anymore, but now we have Facebook and, and Instagram and all the, the avenues and we can go live. And I love this kind of interaction. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool, though. I mean, and it's, it's. Uh, I th- I think that's the, this is the way it kind of works for a lot of, of uh, entrepreneurs, but you know, chiropractors or doctors as well is like they they have this history that that this story that brings them to to where they are and and you know in in a place of really truly serving right. But uh, yeah, I, I love this. This is so cool. So one of the things that um we'd love to share on the on the. Used to be show is, is, you know, words of affirmation, like affirmations, quotes, positive meaning. So I, I'm sure you have so many, but why don't you drop one of those on us? Yeah. So I don't know, for me personally, um, and, and this has been one of my favorites for, for a long time. I just took an adaptation of uh, a Teddy Roosevelt speech. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt uh, wrote a speech back in the early 1900s and it was be the man in the arena. Uh, and, and that's, that's my version of it. My version of it is be the man in the arena. I sum it all down to like one little catchphrase that I can repeat over and over and over again. Um, but, uh, Brene Brown actually took this quote and wrote a book about it a couple of years ago called daring greatly. Mm. Uh, and the idea is, you know, you want to be the man in the arena, right? And you don't want to give power, uh, over to the critics, the naysayers, right? So, 
in my life, I want to always be the man in the arena. I want to, even when I'm getting my butt kicked, right? Like even when I'm, I'm taking losses or failures and learning lessons, you want to be the man in the arena and you don't want to give power to the people that aren't right. So if you're not in the arena, you don't speak into my life. Uh, I always want to be the man in the arena. So that's, that's kind of like my personal uh, daily affirmation, uh, you know, and it's easy on good days and it's important on hard days. <laughs> so, so who do you take criticism from? So, I mean, if, I mean, and I totally get this because I, I actually have, you know, I create boundaries and I have, you know, people I listen to and people I don't listen to. Who do you listen to? Who do you take that criticism and, and uh, advice from? Only anybody who's already where I want to be next. Okay, cool. And it's pretty exclusive. And that gets tough, right? Because, um, you know, I've had mentors through the years and, and once kind of you get past a certain level, their criticism isn't totally relevant anymore. And I, I don't like to, you know, I don't like to tune anybody out or, or, or exclude anything. Um, but I'm just very cautious about what I give power to, right? Because um, one of the things I learned uh, early on, early on years ago, um, was people can only get you as far as they are, mm. right? Like everybody's working with the best that they've got, and they're doing the best that they got, and they can get you to where they are, right? With a very few set of exceptions that are like great coaches, and then those great coaches are taking other people through great things in the world. Um, you know, like Phil Jackson may not have ever been a great basketball player, but he was certainly an epic coach, and you can see the results of that, right? Uh, but anybody else, you you just you don't want to take and give away your power, take advice, give away your power to anybody who isn't where you want to be and impacting the way you want to impact. Yeah. So good. I mean, um, yeah, it's almost like at some point you want to, like you almost transcend the criticism because you have so much confidence and certainty in what you, and, and it's not, not what you do or, but it's more like who you are, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. And you know, it's, it's not, you don't hear it. It's just, you don't give it power. Right. Um, and my message isn't for everyone. Hmm. That was another, that was a hard one for me, man. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about you. I know you, you have, I've watched you for years. Um, and, and it's been so fun to, to watch this, this thing develop and your other efforts as well. Um, and now to get to sit with you, but, um, bring me back to the question. I got, I got lost in my, in my rambling there. Well, our, our question is like, basically like, who do you listen to? Like, who is it that you take advice from and criticize and which, which you answered beautifully. Oh, right. Yeah. You, right. you just don't let it affect you. Right. And, yeah. and so your message isn't for everyone. My message is for those that's supposed to impact and who's supposed to receive it. And that was hard for me because you, you want to help everybody. Right. And yeah. you just want to give the gold to everyone. Uh, but it's not everyone's time to receive that message. And some people are going to run contrary to you and that's okay too. Um, and you just like, if you're going to, level up in leadership, you just got to accept that, right? And yeah. you got to be able to, to claim your platform of mastery and plow forward, um, doing what you do and, and on the mission that you're called to be on. Yeah. It's so it's, it's interesting too. And I love this conversation because it's so relevant to me, this, <laughs> my life, I'll make this all about me, uh, like over the it, last man. week <laughs> is like, um, whenever you break those, that boundary, break that, you know, line in the sand that you like those double yellow lines we say like that we have, you know, it always comes back to haunt you. Um, I, I'm going to steal this from Garrett J. White. It's kind of, or it's my version of Garrett's, um, yeah. you know, who I listen to, who, whose opinion really matters. Uh, people who pay me, people I pay. Right. And yep. then, um, and then also people who love me, like love me, yeah. but I love back. Right. So, you know, family relationships, that kind of thing. But it, anyone else's pa opinions really don't matter, right? They're not of consequence, right? Yeah, I think I think that's, I, I'm, I'm going to quote you now. I think I saw a quote from you earlier this week. It was like, I can count the number of people I trust on one hand with three fingers cut off. <laughs> I deleted the post though, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Now I've put it on recording forever. Oh, but no. Well, it's okay. You know, that's, that's, well, that's no, I mean, it's, it is. You love the people that small. love you. You keep that tight. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But I love this conversation. I mean, because it's so relevant to, to, um, I think for a lot of doctors, they, there's so much input, like, I mean, especially when we're on social media and, and we're in isolation. So we're looking for connection in, you know, other ways, like virtually like this. And, you know, I, I can have opinions of people and honestly, my opinion, even of, 
of them doesn't matter, right? Unless, you know, we're in some sort of a, a relationship, at least in my, my opinion. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, so, I think, I think this is the time too. I think like, like this is the time for chiropractors to really get this right. Cause if we're going to create a shift, if we're going to create the opportunity for people to have more trust in their health and their life and their ability and innate in the things that we know to be true, we've got to step up and be leaders in our community. And I think, yes. I think this is a time we've got to really double down for our brothers and sisters out there um, and, and help people find that anchor and that foundation and that ability to go forth and not be crippled by the overwhelming opinions that are out there right now in a bunch of different directions yeah. um, and, and plow forward. Cause if we're not going to lead the people, the public, the world, our communities, um, then, then we're allowing someone else to lead them down a whole different path. And, and I don't think that's the calling we're on. I think we're called to a higher purpose and a, and a higher mission. And we've got to step up and we got to help each other step up and not just be victims of opinion all the time. Yes. Yeah. I, and I, and again, more, more, uh, relevant to message now or, or poignant a message now than ever before. Um, you know, we always like to talk about the shit sandwich in yeah. this is a, that part of the, the interview. So, you know, as chiropractors, as doctors, you know, as people, right. Especially entrepreneurs, whatever, however we want to classify ourselves. We, we always, it seems like we always continually are presented with a shit sandwich at some point in our life or multiple times. Why don't, why don't you share with us one of those times where you've experienced the struggle, what you took away from it, like how you overcame what you took away from that and now how it's really changed your life and how you move forward. Sure. Uh, dozens, man, dozens, dozens of shit sandwiches. I've got a whole basket. Um, and, and I think that's the thing. You got to fail forward, right? Like I love there, there's an old uh, Denzel Washington does a speech where he talks about failing forward and it's on, you know, the internet and YouTube. And, um, and I love that one. It's, it's, if you're not failing forward, you're not progressing, right? If you're not failing forward, you're not risking very much, right? If, yeah. if you're not risking and failing, you're not learning and growing and expanding. Uh, and so I, it's continual in my life. Um, and, and I, you know, I got it. It's funny. I had a conversation with a friend this year. And I had never realized how much like sports as a young man shaped me. And I, I just took it for granted. Like I played all these sports. My friends all played sports. It was just what you did where I came from. Like it, it was, it, there wasn't another option for us, but I didn't realize like it shapes you. Like, you know, if you lose on Friday, you get to work Monday for the next Friday. If you lose on Tuesday, you get to work for the game Thursday, like depending on the sport. Right. But but I never realized like what a shaping that was for me that there's no option to like sit back and just dwell on your failures. And that that's carried me forward in life kind of accidentally until very recently, I, I really took in those lessons mm. um, because I have a friend that has a completely different background. And he, he asked me earlier this year, that very question. And, and it just, it rattled me that I didn't know the answer until I really thought about it. And he had a completely different perspective because he had a completely different upbringing and experience. Um, and so anyway, to get to the, to the, to the, an example, apologize for the, for the rambling. Um, th there are so many, there, there've been uh, just opportunities um, uh, galore where, where my wife and I just risk it all. Hmm. Um, and sometimes we, we, <laughs> we have to start over and rebuild. Um, and sometimes it's, it's been the greatest rewards. Um, yeah. I think this year, just, just to keep it really relevant to 2020, you know, we're, we're, we're live here in 2020. Um, certainly many chiropractors have experienced a great shift this year. Um, and, and we are among them. Um, uh, very simply, we had kind of redesigned our practice life at the end of last year. We wrote the book. We had a book tour scheduled for this year, mm -hmm. 22 cities. Uh, the whole thing was, yeah, I mean, it, you know, we were on point and then 2020 happened. Um, and so we had already downsized and scaled back our practice um, from, from what we were doing last year. And luckily we run a volume practice. So my wife, myself, our partner, uh, my wife, Dr. Amanda, my partner, Dr. Shannon, um, who also helped co-write the book. Um, uh, we, we, we have volume. And so we had scaled down and we've been able to weather this storm. Okay. But we're like 50% of where we were a year ago. Wow. You know, and for most practices, that would be like crippling. That would just be a, a, a terrible thing. And it is like, 
you know, when you, if, if I can be real, when you look at the books, right, and you see like a $700,000 difference. Wow. That's a gut check moment. Yeah, at least it was for me. Like, I, I didn't grow up dealing with numbers like that. I don't know. <laughs> You know, I'm still every, every once in a while, like, what is going on? How do you even comprehend some of this stuff? But, um, but you know, when you look at 2020 to 2019, like, it's incredible. And I know there are dots out there that are hurting right now. And, um, and, and so, you know, like I said, we had scaled down the practice and we had a book tour planned and 2020 happened. And now there is no book tour because there are no events, right? There's yeah. nothing live happening. All our city tours were canceled. Everything, all our speaking engagements after January were canceled. Um, and so, uh, so we, we did one, one of the 22 events, right? And so we've had to pivot and, and we're learning. Actually, uh, uh, we're learning from you. We're learning from a bunch of people right now. We've, 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 we've done the inner circle with you. We've done uh, the mastermind course with Tony Robbins and, and Russell Brunson and Dean Graziosi. And we're pivoting and having to learn this, what we're doing right now, learn this online world and learn how to communicate, how to get out there and target our audience and how to get this information out because the need for the information isn't any less, but we've got to pivot now and come up with a completely different delivery vehicle. And like, I'm, I'm going to tell you, like a year ago, I thought I had it made, man. I was like, we wrote the book. This thing's a <laughs> smash success. Like yeah. this is relevant. It's my, you know, my like life's work to this point here it is. And it's served up and it's going to bring people to chiropractic and it's going to do amazing things, to people's lives and health. And you know, you're like 22 city book tour and then it's gone. Right. Wow. And so what do you do? Like you can't, I, I've still got information to get. I've still got work to do. The world still needs it just as much, but we've got to pivot now and come up with a new Avenue. And same thing with practice. You know, the marketing calendar is gone, right? Yeah. There's no screenings. There's no events, you know, the places we did dinner doesn't exist anymore, right? Like, so we got, you know, it's like starting over and it's, what do you do? And I'm gonna tell you, the very first thing I did when, when we came back into practice and back into service in, in this COVID area is the simplest thing ever. And this is old school docs, so this is just going back. I got on the phone and I called each of our patients, right? And I spent days just calling people and having a conversation, seeing yeah. where they were at and seeing what's going on with their life. and talking them through the situation, what's going on. For some people, you know, the answer is they kind of need to shelter in for their, their personal well-being and, and what's going on in their life. And for other people, it was like, you know, let's, let's work this out and let's get you in and let's see what's going on. And that was huge, man. You talk about, you know, just an old school technology. It's like pick up the phone and call somebody and show them that you give a shit. Like, do, 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 I do, love do. our people. <laughs> like dialing. You know, yeah, it's just uh, uh, the simplest thing. It doesn't always, you know, like I said, like to get the book out, we've got to learn this new technology. And I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm way behind the eight ball. Because I used to be mm. so up on tech. I came up in TV and radio. Like I used to run studios, you know, like we built whole studios. And now it's just like I'm learning this whole internet world. It's a whole new game. But I'm having fun with it. But sometimes you don't, you know, like kind of, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like pick up the phone and call yep. your people check in on them, show them that you care, see what's going on in their life, see how they're hurting, see how you can be a resource and a value to them. It's, it's old school and it works. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's actually, you know, um, it's interesting you mentioned that because like with our inner circle or our laptop lifestyle or the virtual practice Academy, that's the biggest theme that moving forward and, um, you know, 20, like this last quarter of 2020, but also into 2021 is I'm calling it like the dialogue funnel. Like it's, it's really about honestly, just moving from this to like, first thing would be like some sort of a Facebook messenger chat to some sort of a dialogue to then getting on a phone with people. It's all about connection. And, um, that is what we're seeing as, a, as the big shift versus trying to, everyone's trying to scale their business and get things online, you know, like, which is, there is an online component to that funnel. But, you know, the other piece of this too, is like, there's so many people like yourself who, yeah, I mean, massive pivot, you know, I'm sorry to hear it, but I mean, you, you know, life throws you, a, a, you know, the, the wrench. And so what you do is you, you pivot, you, right. you shift, you create something different. And there's people who were like, uh, we had, um, a gentleman we're building a funnel for where he, um, he had like 70 speaking engagements the entire year. They're gone. Yeah, and he's like, gone. 
but he's like yourself. He has tons of content, tons of knowledge. So now we're just, you know, now we're building out that online funnel for him there. So it's, it's, it is a, it's a, it's an interesting time of, you know, marketing, but our, you know, in business, but it's also a very, um, challenging time for so many, right? It's going to be a real distillation process going on here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Everybody's going to filter out the other side one way or another, but you know, I'm I'm a Tony Robbins fan. I love, I love Tony and his stuff, but but Tony says, you know, like I'm a gladiator. Winter is my season, you know, give me your difficulties and I'll show you success. Like that's, that's the mindset right now. That's what we've got to get and get through. And, and um, you know, look, next year's coming no matter what. You know, you're either going to find a way to get in the arena and get it done or next year's still coming. It doesn't matter. You know, time will continue, you know, so um, I'm just, it's engagement. You you just got to pick up and move forward. Yeah. He gives, I love Tony Robbins too. I remember hearing him speak and um, we were, and he uses this example. Maybe you've heard it before because he uses them often is he said he was on a, a flight when he, before he had his own jet. And it was like the first time they ever had Wi-Fi. And um, so he's on the flight and the Wi-Fi worked for like 10 minutes and then it went out. And he said, everyone complained so badly, you know, because they had that Wi-Fi for 10 minutes and then it was taken away from them. And it's almost like that's what the the feeling, like he's like, it was, even though it was only that 10 minutes and it was that up level of their consciousness and that upgrade and what they're like the, what they was offered and like how they could actually function in their life. And when it was taken away from them, they were so much loss. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love that example because that's what, that's what the pivot is right now for so many. It's like, okay, yeah, we can't do dinner workshops. We can't even do, you know, group reports. We can't, can't, can't. Great. Okay. So now it's taken away and there's a lot sense of loss. Now what do we do and shift and move forward? So I love that you're, you're, you know, you go back to the old, the old school, we'll call it of like, just like, let's talk to people. (laughs) Humans, humans have not changed. Human needs, the basic needs have not changed you know, find a way to, 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 to love people. I don't know. That's, that's my, you know, find a way to connect and love people. It doesn't matter what it is, right? You, you want to see people light up. You want to see your practice members light up, write them a letter. Yes. Handwrite one. <laughs> he, he, he's gotten a letter recently, right? Like blows people's mind. Like the simplest things um, just derive meaning and connection. And that's, that's all often like we all want to be cared for, right? We want to know that people care about us. We want to know that people love us, that they, have good intentions for us and, and our best interests at heart. So I guarantee. So when we talk in marketing about open rates, right? I guarantee that letter you write will have a hundred percent open rate versus like an email that you might blast. Oh, out yeah. if it's a generic one. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe if you're lucky, 15% of the people will open it, but yeah. that's, that's brilliant. I love it. Lots of tips here that we're giving. Take the guesswork out of your practice. Achieve certainty with the insight scanning system. Chiropractors can now analyze a patient's condition more accurately, communicate findings more effectively, while allowing both the doctor and patient to track the effectiveness of your care. Find out how insight can help grow 30% in as little as three months by filling out the practice survey assessment, a $149 value. Head to insightcla.com forward slash PSA. The event code is TC. P. Okay. So, so let's, let's hear a little bit more about like, so the, your book is called the secret of life. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about that. Right. So um, my partners and I, we just feel we've been blessed, right? We've been blessed to come through chiropractic and school at a really unique time. And we've been blessed with just amazing exposure. Like we came through in a time that like we got to experience many of the greats of the profession, like of, of, of our era, right? Like we got to hang with Sid and Reggie and we got to hang with, with uh, Jim Chestnut and, uh, and Nima. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and we've got to experience just um, this, this breadth of chiropractic at a unique time, Donnie Epstein um, and, and network and Jay Holder and torque release. And, and so we came through Jeannie Ohm, who was a powerhouse for ICPA. Yeah. And a lot of these people aren't around now, right? Yeah, like, like true. this generation, you know, one of the reasons I, I, I'm back involved at the university level is um, this generation doesn't have a lot of greats right now. And if mm. they're going to, it's got to be us, right? Like, this is it. We're the ones that have to be the next impactors on this profession and carry the torch forward. 
um, and continue its expansion, right? We've got more work to do as chiropractors, I think. I don't think we've answered all the chiropractic questions. I, I don't think uh, we're done exploring where chiropractic can go and what it can mean to the world. Um, and, and that's what brought the book on is, is we've got this unique set of knowledge and this unique set of experiences that we were just blessed to get because of the time we got to come through and the encounters we got to have. And when you put it all together, we had never seen it in one place. This is just our collection of all the knowledge we've gleaned over the last you know, 10 to 20 years. <clears throat> and we had never seen it all put together. And I thought, you know, I want to put something together that, that two things, that one brings it all together for chiropractors uh, in one place, you know, and, and it's kind of like how to run your life from a Nate's point of view, right? Um, and then two, that was something you could give to the public that was mentally digestible, that they could read in an afternoon and pass on to a friend, right? And, and the idea is that we can, we can communicate this stuff in a way the public can receive and digest it and take it and make it part of their life, right? And so, um, yeah, I don't know, two, 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 two great quotes, I think, from the book. I, I just like to throw them out. They're also kind of mantras I cycle in the head all the time is um, the way we, we see you is you are a soul experiencing and expressing yourself through a nervous system running a body. And to me, that's like, that's like the Trinity, right? Like it's like soul, nervous system, body, and they're all three equally important. You can't do one without the other two and you can't do two without the other third one. Um, but it gives, gives weight to all three, right? And it brings it into perspective who and what we are, but the necessity of the interaction of the three you know, kind of components. Um, and so I love that. And then the second one uh, is just to shape things around an innate point of view, the way chiropractors think about a lot of things natural um, is if you were put on this earth, no cities, no cars, no roads, what, right? What would it be like if you're put on this earth, no cities, no cars, no roads, right? Like, what do you eat? You know, what's provided? And it's not raw and natural form, right? Like how you move around. You know, you, you walk, run, or climb, unless you can make friends with a horse or an elephant, right? Like, um, you know, what do you drink? You know, fresh water, you know? Um, and we go through that through about uh, 25 or 26 topics in the book, and we run it down. You know, everything from um, food to the nervous system to uh, water to uh, the, the things we encounter that our ancestors didn't if, if we're on a pure earth, right? Like, Mm -hmm. uh, and how to how to account for those things, right? So, um, you know, how do you maximize your intake of what you need to build healthy cells and tissues and have a healthy, vibrant life, uh, and minimize the toxicity, right? Like, how do you minimize toxins in your world? Um, and some are out of our control, right? But can we get ourselves to a sufficient and healthy level to where we can handle a certain amount of toxicity with increased coherence, increased efficiency, a better running nervous system? and less energy output and less decline, right? Like that's the idea. Simple, but not easy, right? I mean, it's simple. it seems like simple concepts that we all know, but the, the part of it of like, it's not easily done for or committed to by so many people, right? Yeah, yeah, and just, I don't know, it, it was just to us, it was like a no-brainer, like this is something that, that chiropractic needs, this is something the world needs. Um, and it, and it just brought it all together in a way that, that I don't think has ever been done yet. Mm. And, and hopefully, uh, hopefully it does a good job and it serves its purpose and hopefully somebody comes behind it and makes it better. Right. Like that's the idea. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if, if I'm a doc listening right now and, or watching, you know, cause this is live as well, again, I want to go check out the book. I mean, I, I did a quick Amazon search. It's here, tons of rev great reviews. Um, is there, you know, another place that they could actually, I mean, I just Googled this and there's a whole list, but is there another place, a specific URL we can send them to? Uh, sure. I think, I, I, I think it's the secret of life book.com. It's okay. either secret of life book.com or the secret of life book.com. It's one of the two um, apologies for not, not remembering exactly. I probably should remember that. That's probably important. Uh, but yeah, you know, 90% of the world's going to go to Amazon. That's, that's the easiest way. It's also available through, um, Hay House and Balboa Press, that's our publisher. So, you know, they have it on their website. Um, you can get it on Kindle. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, e-ready and all that good stuff. So, it, you know, it's available in every format you can get it these days. So um, it's out there. Yeah, I, uh, so I did Secret of Life 
book.com and here we are. Hey, so there it is. Copy, yeah, right there. So that goes right to your, um, to your page to learn more about the book, but to also grab a copy. So um, listeners and uh, viewers, we're going to actually have a page dedicated to our discussion with uh, Dr. Love on the chiropracticphilanthropist.com. And we'll have um, all the resources um, and links there as well. If you're actually listening on your mobile, you can head over to your show notes. If you open up the show notes, we'll have a link directly to go and check out The Secret of Life right now. Cool. Thanks, man. It's just taking the guesswork out of things, right? Like taking the guesswork out of how to do this better and 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 making it simple for, for people. You know, you go in a grocery store and you wonder what to buy or not buy. You know, ask people, what, what would you eat? No cities, no cars, no roads. What would you do, right? It's finding simple ways to make it applicable in the real world. And then from that, breakthroughs happen, right? Like that, you know, when you can clean people's lives and, and, and you know, help them understand why they want to get adjusted and why they want to take things further and mm-hmm. um, move chiropractic in that direction too. It just, it just moves everything forward. Love it. You know, and the other piece of this too is like, I don't know about a lot of docs here, but you know, we always celebrated milestones in our practice. So we would give gifts to our, our patients and practice oh, yeah. members. Yeah. So like, all right, you're three months in congratulations. So are you, yep. you know, made this milestone. So we always gifted a book. So this would be a wonderful gift. Nice. And, uh, yeah. So maybe docs will go in and buy a box of them. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, it's, it's available. It's out there and that's what it's for. And, and you know, on that note, uh, you know, we wanted it to be like, I say, cheap so we we didn't jack the price it's we we don't make a ton of money in the books it's inconsequential to my life completely um and we wanted to get something they can read in a day right mm-hmm. that was huge it's 108 pages right we started actually this is fun sir we started at 326 pages oh my <laughs> and we're like nobody's gonna read this and so there's a whole process months after months of us just like chopping it down chopping it down so we got into this so um awesome that's, that's the idea that it's actually something that can make a difference. Love it. Um, okay, let's head into the uh, TCP time machine. So we're actually, what we're going to do is we're going to take you, put you into the TCP time machine. Now we're going to send you back to a younger version of yourself. And this is the young version of you coming out of chiropractic college. Now you have all the life experience you have right now, all the knowledge that you have. Mm-hmm. What would you say to that younger self? two things, um, two things. I would take my younger self, uh, five years ago and drive home the certainty, right? Mm. Like, um, and, and there's a, a, a set of exercises I have now that I didn't have then, um, and just drive the certainty home, right? Because we have such a big job to do. Um, and the uncertainty gets in the way, right? The doubting days get in the way. Um, the, the minutes or hours or days you waste wondering, just get in the way of the job you've got to do. So uh, I would drill the certainty. In. Um, but the, uh, the second thing uh, is really, and, and I'm, I'm not entirely even sure how to phrase this, but, but that do your job and don't worry about everybody else, right? Like I'm here to do the work I'm here to do. Uh, I'm here to to serve the mission I'm called to serve. Um, and, and you can't wait on somebody else to do it for you. Right. Like, um, and that was a big one for me. We, we, we've, uh, a lot of times in practice, like thought, you know, oh, if we could just make this connection or if we could just hook up with that person, we just, just, and the bottom line is it was just me waiting to get out of my own way and serve. Right. And so, um, that's just so clutch. Like you, 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 you don't need, you know, the, the nine person team and the seven doc office and the, you know, all the things and, and you don't need to, you know, hit a certain marker, you know, before you're, you're making an impact, go make the impact, go serve. And that, that would have been such a helpful lesson. Um, back then when you always think it's the next, well, you know, I've heard you talk about it. You always think it's the next mile marker. What do you do after you get 700 visits? Well, you, you get to a thousand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, if, if, if you learn to just get out of your way and go serve and go take care of people, um, it's to me and, and not, not be waiting on a marker or, or someone else or a certain size of team or, or whatever it is. Um, just go do what you're supposed to do. Go do what you're called to do. I love it. I love it. I just bought your book, by the way. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I hope you enjoy it. I look forward to a review. Oh, look at this. He's upselling me. <laughs> 
<laughs> into an online course. There I love is. it. There it is. I love it. You've That's seen how this before. Done. What's that? As it, you've seen this move before. I've seen this move before. Yes, it's perfect. <laughs> it's exactly, exactly how it should be done. Because, well, I mean, and, and to like, now we're going to go into funnel marketing. <laughs> But it's exactly, I mean, when you, when someone who, who is ready to like, I'm honestly like I'm buying because I'm like, I'm interested. I want to see what is the secret of life? I want to know, like, how is this relevant to, to Kairos? And so I would love to, uh, yeah, I'll do a little uh, video or live when I grab, when I get my copy. That'd be awesome. But I, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, and if, if someone really likes what you have to offer, they find value for the creation. I, I'm, I, I have a huge amount of respect for people who create value and that are creators in this world, right? And uh, yeah, so if, if people want to, then why shouldn't we offer them something yeah. else, right? Yeah. So I love it. And it you know, it's, it's again, it's not for 10,000 people. It's for the ones that it's for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yep. and I love that. Um, okay, so great advice for yourself. And then, so the, if you could say, like if we, you know, there was one thing, one resource that you believe doctors should go out and actually, you know, consume right now. So it could be a book, could be a podcast, could be, um, you know, a video training. It could be a person, you know, what would the one resource you think docs should go and find right now? Um, I'm, I'm going to say two. I'm sorry. I got to do two. It, it can't be one. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the, the one I found helpful recently in my life um, is, is something called uh, 12 minutes. Uh, it's, it's an app. Let me make sure I'm saying it right. Hold on. I've got the phone here. Yeah. 12 minutes is the app. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I've done several versions of these over the years. I, I, I have philosopher's notes 10 years ago and, and it's another version of that. It's they take, just thousands and thousands of books and, and bring it down to a 12 minute audio summary. Right. And so what I've done for about the last seven or eight months, uh, most of, of 2020 is I downloaded 12 minutes and I bought the subscription and I listen to one every day in the shower, right? Cause it's 12 minutes and it's just a refresher. And it's, you know, it's, it's things that I've read multiple times. Sometimes it's, it's, sometimes it's new and that's cool. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just good to recycle, you know, that, that great information. It's like, you know, like timeless classics, like, uh, like think and grow rich or rich dad, poor dad, or, um, as a man thinketh, or, you know, in any, and all, right. Like all the books we should all read, right. Mm -hmm. And we should all keep fresh. Um, so I love that like 12 minutes, I put it on when I'm in the shower and, and by the time I'm done getting ready, it's, it's done, you know, and I've consumed like, you know, a reminder or a fresh group of raw information every single day. And that's been a game changer for me. Um, I've, I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, this is kind of effortless. It just plays while I'm showering. So that's, you know, that's nice. Um, so that's the one. And then the second one is, is, is um, I think we've got to keep asking the question, where's chiropractic going? And how do we answer one of the original questions, which is what happens when you deliver the adjustment that connects, unites man to physical with man to spiritual. Mm. Um, and, and I think a lot of chiros have closed the door on, on uh, what chiropractic is and where it can go. And I think I just want to ignite a fire right now in, in, in the people in our profession and say, we're not done yet. Mm. Um, and there's some really amazing research out there. Uh, into where this thing goes. What happens when you have a completely subluxation free system? What happens when you clear the channels, right? What happens when you can measure neurospinal coherence and watch it advance? What happens, you know, in, in network spinal and Donnie Epstein, what happens when you see a uh, somatopsychic wave or a network wave and you watch the coherence of that wave advance? Like, what does that mean to the human? What does that mean to the system? What does that mean to humanity? And so, um, I just want to open a door there. That's, that's the second, it's not really a resource, but it's a question for you. And, and I think it goes across all techniques and across all chiropractic. Where are we going? Uh, and, yeah. and, and what's our level of play involved in that as we advance this thing to its next iteration and next level? Cause I, I think we owe a bigger service to humanity um, than, uh, than maybe where we're sitting right now. Yeah. Well, and it, it kind of, this is, this is a good kind of full circle of the, the conversation today is that, you know, where I, I, I was, I, I'm like, you, you, I, I keep coming back to that statement. You said of like a lot of the greats 
you know, Reggie, um, you know, like there's so many people, right. Who like Jeannie Ohm, like they're, they're, you know, these, these people are gone. Right. Yeah. And yep. I'm trying to think, I'm like, is there any other real true philosophers and, you know, um, you know, people who are really championing the, the philosophy of chiropractic, which is really what got us where we are. And it's not yep. from a place of dogma, but to, 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 how do we link the science and philosophy together versus how do we separate them? Yeah. 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 You know, the, I, I, I think I heard you talk about this. there's a, uh, there's a movie out called the social dilemma right now. On yes. Netflix. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but yes, and there's good, good little movie. Um, and then you'll go talk about it on social media. So it comes full circle too, but um, it, that, that one cracks me up. But anyway, there's a quote at the beginning of that one. And, and it said, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to butcher it, but loosely um, at their highest and best science and magic are indistinguishable. Hmm. Right. And I love that. And that like, if you were going to sum chiropractic up for me, that's the quote that like brings it all home is, you know, finding that point where science and magic are indistinguishable, but we still have a duty to go find it and explore it and explain it. And I love explain that. Explain it. Yes. I love that. That's perfect. That's a great way to kind of encapsulate the conversation today too. Awesome, Doc. I want to thank you so much for being on the Chiropractic Philanthropist today. And uh, thank you for yeah, having I'm me. And make man. sure that we we drop the link for for your book, but also, you know, uh, if you don't mind, um, you know, um, I know you're on social media on Facebook. If Docs want to reach out to you, want to, you know, open up that chat or dialogue with you, I'm going to encourage them to do that. And um, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Facebook's a great way to get me. That's that's easy. Yeah, I'm awesome. I'm Robert Shirley Love on Facebook. Go, go find me and we'll connect. Fantastic. So thank you so much for giving back today. Really appreciate you. Doc, thank you. Have a great day, man. Want more certainty with your x-rays? Want to streamline your workflow more so you can see more patients? Or just want to limit your liability with x-rays? Get a second opinion. Dr. Cliff Tao is a chiropractic radiologist and reads diagnostic imaging studies for all chiropractors. His professional, highly detailed reports are provided next business day with stat reports available same day. Head to clifftowdcdacbr.com for more information. That's clifftow, T-A-O, D-C, D-A-C-B-R.com today. You can also find us on Facebook and LinkedIn. So you've heard the struggles, you've heard the successes, and this episode is done. But there's still so much more to come and so much more to learn. Head on over to thechiropracticphilanthropist.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free practice building tips and strategies, including how to market your practice with your very own podcast and so much more. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on The Chiropractic Philanthropist.